Um, today we are going to have a wonderful uh, soapbox performance and presentation. Um, speeches from these young folks who are part of the Western Washington Fellowship of Reconciliation. Um, these are the peace activist trainees and they've been hanging out for a month developing their skills and capacity as change makers in their communities. Tom. Listen to what I have to say. I am tired. For the past 17 years, I have been tired. My voice will be heard. The youth of today, the leaders of tomorrow, have thoughts, ideas, and dreams. I dream of a world rid of inequalities, a world rid of ignorance and fear. So youth, listen to the words I have to say. Seek before you speak. Seek truth. Seek justice. Seek values and morals. Be individuals and be heard. Thank you. These streets are not safe. I am not safe. All of you are not safe. No, it's not from drug dealers or gang conflict. We are in danger of the very people enrolled to protect us. I am talking about police. Last year's census depicts nearly 6,000 cases of police brutality across our nation. Six thousand. That does not even begin to touch the number of unreported cases in our country. A mere 14% of the officers involved in these attacks will serve time. That leaves a whopping 86% free to roam the streets, in your neighborhood, near your families, with a gun and a getaway free badge. This is unacceptable. We will no longer be targeted for the color of our skin nor the physical appearance of our bodies. We will not be afraid in our own city. We will not be made into pseudo-criminals. If we want change, if we want safety, then we must stand up against our oppressors, the real criminals and reclaim our streets and our neighborhoods to the original content of our safety. With the police watching you, who is there left to watch the police? Yeah. All right. Up next is a Zeb. Somalia was colonized by Italy and Britain. The region colonized by Britain was given to Ethiopia and Ethiopian country, the only African country not to be colonized. The region is called Ugadin and it is still under Ethiopian jurisdiction. America not wanting to lose our alliance with one of the most strongest countries in the East, Africa, America aids them. The people of Ugadin want to, want to be given back to Somalia. The region consists of Somalian Muslims. They are being oppressed by the government. Mothers are forced to wash their daughters, waters, their daughters raped in front of them, and their children hanged and burned and buried alive. The Ethiopian government continues to turn a blind eye towards these things. Towards these things. Help us stop the genocide in Ogaden. To put this to the attention of everyone, to stop the mass slaughter of humans. If you want to get involved, contact the ONLF, the Ogaden National Liberation Front. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Toby and I'm going to say a few words about immigration. Picture you and your family living your normal lives in this country, only there are two problems. One, you and your family moved to this country when you were a baby and none of you have citizenship. Problem number two. 
You're a great person, but you made a past mistake. You committed a crime, and this could even have been made as a minor. Now once you become 18, the federal government has the power to tear you away from your family and send you back to the country you were born in, that you probably don't even call home. Imagine the fear and despair you might feel in this situation. How are you going to live in a country without your family that you may not even remember? You don't speak the language, and you don't know anyone there. This is the problem many children of immigrants in this country face today, specifically in your community, Cambodian American immigrants. They are all on a list and can be taken away from their families at any point in time. I had a friend once. He was smart, kind, funny, and caring. He was sent to Cambodia for a crime he committed as a 17 year old. He was 17. He was stripped away from his friends and family, never allowed to return to his true home. Like you, these people have families. Like you, they have friends here. Like you all, they have lives here. Only it can all be taken away from them when an ICE official snaps his fingers. How many of you have parents from another country? Grandparents? Great grandparents? Eventually, we are all immigrants of this country. Immigration and deportation law must be reformed. Thank you. All right. Give a warm welcome for Hoda. Hello, my name is Hoda Abdullahi. Now, when you hear that name, what do you think? You don't hear my personality. You don't hear my interest. All you hear is Muslim. Although I am proud to be Muslim, that does not stop people from thinking I am a terrorist. It has been said to my face. It has been said behind my back. And every time I go to the airport, I get a random check. You would think our government would be better since we are the so-called melting pot America, but no. The U.S. reinforces these misconceptions by throwing innocent Muslims into Guantanamo Bay with no trial and no justice. Half of all de detainees are released because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. That is enough to be tortured for years. As more and more people come out with their story, the U.S. still denies what's going on in this prison. The Secretary of the State said, Guantanamo Bay is no resort, but we do not abuse our individuals. He says this as he feeds them 10-year-old food, chain them, torture them, beat them for 15 hours at a time. On top of this, they are force-feeding Muslims while they are on a hunger strike, also when it is the holy month of Ramadan, when you cannot eat from the sun up until sundown. This procedure is done by sticking a tube up your nose all the way into your stomach and pumping nutrients into you. When they do this, they chain them down and strap them down from their head to their toe. As all this is being done in Guantanamo Bay, Obama is inviting Muslims to the White House to break the fast. And he's not letting Muslims in Guantanamo Bay practice their religion. If there's one thing that the pledge has taught me is that there is just liberty and justice for all, but for all white Christian Americans. For more information, please go to reprieve.org.uk. Just listen to that, .uk, because the US isn't doing anything. Thank you. Give another warm welcome for Hussein. Hi. Okay. What happened? What happened to the American dream? What happened to the American dream? It no longer exists. Look around you. 
millions are homeless, millions don't have jobs, and millions can't keep up with everyday needs. Our families struggle with basic needs, such as healthcare, education, and other things. The rising use of tomorrow are left hopeless. They're left hopeless because with corrupted school systems and rising tuition hikes. And all they see around them are greed, violence, and injustice. We're all struggling and we all need help. But what does the government do about this? Simply nothing, with more budget costs on education, healthcare, and countless other things. Did you know that the government spends trillions of money on war and other useless stuff when they should be spending it on education, healthcare, and other things that will benefit us? Yeah. A change has to be made and it starts with us. Let your voice be heard as what benefits me benefits you and what benefits you benefits us at all. Thank you. is Mia. Give her a nice warm welcome. Hi, I'm Mia McFarland and my speech is on women's rights. I am a girl and I love it. I love it but I know there are disadvantages. I know that I will make less than a man for doing the same exact job. And I know that people will tell me that my brothers drive better than me simply because I'm a girl. Which is not true, they're all bad drivers. <laughs> And I know politicians will continue to make decisions about what I can do with my body when people are free to have guns and kill without consequence. We live in a, in a culture where it's okay for girls to dress like boys but not the other way around. Where we haven't even had our first female president. And where girls are expected to keep their babies when men can leave whenever they want. Even in our own city, where we believe equality lives and thrives, women who work for the city are being paid less. It seems ridiculous that even in 2013, inequality still exists. I don't know why it hasn't changed, but I do know that it can change and that we can change it. So here I am today, telling you to do something, anything, to help. Send a letter to the mayor and ask him to change the pay grade for women. It doesn't matter what you do. It just matters that you did something. Thank you. All right. Up next, Anicia. Give her a nice warm up. Hi, my name is Anicia Evans, and I will be talking about education in low income areas. Imagine walking into a school and the first thing you see is metal detectors and police officers. Imagine walk, sitting in your desk and you open your textbook and it has graffiti and torn pages. Imagine the teachers at your school are unqualified or, as, or more unqualified than teachers in higher, in, in higher income areas. These situations really do exist. So imagine what type of message, message does this send to kids that go to these schools. In low income areas, families aren't given as much attention as the rich. Hence the saying, the rich get, the rich get richer while the poor get poor. Nelson Mandela once said, quote, Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world." Unquote. Limiting funds for low-income students, for low-income schools, prevents those kids from getting ahead and unlocking their potential, thus creating another generation of low-income families and unequal opportunities. In order for us to change this, we shouldn't turn a blind eye. We're all connected and we need to stop and we need to stop preparing the neck the gen, the next generation in low income areas to become criminals. You can help by talking to school districts or writing them letters. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, give a nice warm welcome for Ali. Woo! 
Hi, my name's Allie. How would you like it if Washington had an increase of 3.9 to about 5.7 million dollars in revenue? To support programs that better our environment, our community, and our youth. Money that can prevent budget cuts from our schools and our social services. Today's society looks down on same-sex couples even though allowing same-sex marriage in Washington can result in the physical economical benefit. It also promotes a social acceptance worldwide. A popular current artist, Macklemore, his lyrics in the song Same Love so clearly explain his pro-gay rights position and endorses a message of equal love. And it also defines the problems in the, those that do not understand. He states a preconceived idea of what it all meant. This mindset is the very same that is sprouted from fear and hate, and it has oppressed so many others throughout the history of this nation just for being different. This mindset has to change. Mankind should not have the power to restrict another of the rights that should be given to an infant that equates to the same logic that pronounces you a human in this world from the day you are born. For so long, we have thought that loving a man or woman of the same sex was wrong and a disease. But as of 1973, homosexuality was declassified as an illness by the American Psychological Association. Religiously, to tell someone that they are being born into a hell because of their sexual preference is gathering information from a book that is thousands of years old. And although there are many great morals and lessons within the Bible, there are others that are less inviting. Those in opposition of same-sex couples want to strongly bring out the teachings from the Bible. Although there are many great ones, they want to brush off and ignore some of the less popular lessons. In the Bible, the Old and the New Testament contain statements categorizing same-sex acts as an abomination in the book of Leviticus, as well as how wrongful it is for women to exchange natural relations with unnatural ones in the book of Paul. And it's ridiculous to think that any one person can follow texts that states these opinions and also follow the others in the same sense, such as a marriage shall be considered valid only if the wife is a virgin. If the wife is not a virgin, she shall be executed in Deuteronomy 22, 13-21. So why judge someone solely on their preference? Does it so deeply affect your life that you must do all you can to stop a community of people from being happy? And not only are you stopping their relationship status, but also 1,138 other parts of their lives. That's the number of federal benefits and responsibilities granted to a marriage, each one being withheld from a same-sex couple. I plead for those with arguments against gay marriage to take the time to understand and to listen and to learn from those under today's segregation. And I believe every other person out there has the same right to experience a relationship without being looked down upon. And I quote, no freedom till we're equal. Damn right I support it.